Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the radio show here. I'm your humble host, Mike Kamau, here on a Monday night at about 11.08. I'm going to be here for maybe 10, 15 minutes, and then I'm going to bid this one adieu and get and then get situated to get back to go to bed for the night so I can get, get up tomorrow morning. Um, so yeah, guys, hello, everybody, and um, uh, here to wish America another another night another good night and everything um so uh so yeah everybody um welcome back i think this is episode 58 um of the show uh and as of this recording i think this is 14 more episodes than i did uh yeah this is about 14 more episodes than i did with my blog in my first year which is good and i think i'll have many many more since we have um since we have like eight months left in the year so seven well yeah yeah about seven and a half because this month's half over so um and everything else so yeah guys i uh, hope you guys are staying safe uh for those of you working out there um just take all the precautions wear a mask don't touch your face and sanitize and wash, 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 wash. Stay six feet and, um, and everything else. But I'm not here to talk about the virus because that depresses everybody and it's just plain boring. So I'm going to entertain you guys tonight for some, with something. thought I would uh, for at least 15 minutes, 10 or 15 minutes or so. So I just wanted to tell you guys that, uh, yes, I'm healthy. Everything's good. I'm not, I, I don't have it. I'm not infected, which is great. So I'm still in the fight. Um, but enough about that, enough, enough about the virus, enough about COVID-19. Everything, so, um, so, uh, you know, do a couple of things to take your mind off of it, uh, um, and everything. So, um, so, if, uh, if people are, you know, uh, there's one thing that I, um, that I like to do uh, once in a while is I like to tell you guys a story and um, and I don't tell these very often but obviously I have encouraging ones to to tell you guys and um, and everything else so um, yeah so I do have a story for you guys and um, and I just want to tell you guys, um, I just want to tell you guys that, uh, you know, it's, it's one of, uh, it's just one of those things where you, uh, where you just have to, uh, you know, uh, I want to actually, uh, since we're talking, since I'm, since I was talking about music, pump up music a couple of couple of months ago uh about a month ago or something like that i did it in a radio episode i think my top five tracks to keep me pumped or uh set of music to keep me pumped and going um you guys probably don't know it but i'm the biggest frank sinatra fan on this face of the earth there's many out there there's many people out there that are like me and uh they're big fans of full blue eyes you guys probably were wondering how in God's name did I get into listening to Old Blue Eyes? Well, um, you have to be introduced to the music first because it's not music that a lot of people listen to him, but um, but it's an acquired taste, and you got to be able to like the music, and uh, you have to build up a you have to build up quite a collection in order to be said that you're a Frank Sinatra fan. You just can't have uh, you just can't have a couple of songs on a on an iPod. You have to have quite a few discs, not only a couple of digital, but you have to have a few physical albums. Um, actually, my actually, it's in my DNA that I actually uh, in my past that I actually like that I like uh, Frankie's music because um, it actually started way before I was born. Of course, because Frank Sinatra was away, was around way before I was born. Um, for those of you who don't know, Francis Abbott Sinatra was born in 1915 and he passed away from us, uh, very, very, very sadly at the age of, I think it was 84, 83, 84. 
I think it was 1998. I was too young to know who he was, but I'm pretty sure I was, I'm pretty sure my dad mentioned the name some point, uh, that day. Um, I forget when it was, um, but, uh, um, my, uh, my, the, uh, the interest and as I said, goes back into my DNA, goes back into my family. Um, back in the 19, uh, I'm, I'm going to say, uh, it started back in, um, it, it probably started before my dad was born too, because my dad was born in the sixties. Um, right at the height of Frank Sinatra's career, of course, my dad was born in 61. So my dad was born right in the middle of his, um, and about the, my dad was born about the middle of his career because Sinatra started his career in 1939. Um, my grandmother, uh, my grandmother, uh, who passed away in 2006, um, was a very big fan of him. She had, um, collections of, uh, D Martin and everybody, but the biggest collection she had was of Francis Albert Sinatra. And she had a lot of his records. Um, I think if my dad would tell me that the, on certain nights, you know, cause this is before television was the accepted thing to just sit in front of, you know, you listen to popular music and you dance to it and you learned how to, and you actually learned how to dance to, to, to the music. Um, because this was great music to dance to. Um, it was dinner club. It basically brings an actual was basically dinner club, dinner club music, um, very high ritzy type stuff because, for those of you who know his career, he performed in countless places, Carnegie Hall, um, the radio show, Music Hall, The Sands, um, Caesar's Palace in Vegas. Uh, he performed all around the world. Um, you know, he performed in Australia, Japan, any place where he could perform, he performed. So England, the, the UK, he did perform over in Britain. Or the United Kingdom uh, for in the sixties, um, and I think he performed quite a few times to the point where they actually did actually renamed Royal Hall Royal Albert Hall um, because you know because of his middle name. Um, my I did not know who he was, and I didn't know his music. Um, I think the first uh, if you put on any song. Uh, from him, the yeah, album, I'll know most of them, but there's one song that I love to listen to back when I was, back when I was, uh, back when I was, uh, the, you know, one of the ones that I identified with. For those of you who watched Mrs. Doubtfire, that one scene where they, where he does his little transformation, they did Luck Be a Lady, that ended up being the first song. And I think I remember asking my dad who sang, who sang it. Great, good song. Uh, it was, if there was one thing that I recognized that was a, a very catchy song, I think it was maybe three, four years after I, after I watched the movie for the 10th time or something like that on TV, because we didn't have the tape. Well, we actually had the VHS because it was a funny movie. Come on. It's, it's Robin Williams. Um, it's Robin Williams, uh, Sally Field and, um, um, Pierce Brosnan, young Pierce Brosnan in it, in it, um, back in the early 90s, back in the late eighties, early nineties. Um, and, uh, a lot of the, you know, it was a very funny movie, but I always remember that one scene where they're doing this, where they're doing the transformation, uh, scene. And, um, I remember listening to the song and I was asking my dad, I said, who is that, who is that singing the song? And, and what's the name of the song? And my dad fired off very quickly. I said, that is Like Be Laid by Frank Sinatra. And I remember uh, trying to find it on, uh, well, this was before YouTube. Um, I remember my dad actually having one of the CDs. And I'd start playing it. And anytime we were in his uh, truck or anytime I had the CD in the house on a CD player, um, when he let me, cause it's kind of like gold to him because, you know, he was, cause he grew up with Sinatra back in the sixties. Yeah. I mean, he grew up with Bobby Darren. He grew up with Bobby Darren, Dean Martin and the rest of the gang pop, pop culture back in the sixties. But yeah, he grew up, uh, with that in his early years. 
of course, in the 70s and 80s, uh, you know, the rock scene started coming in and everybody was into the Rolling Stones, Beatles, Led Zeppelin, um, uh, and uh, The Who, amongst others. And um, it just, uh, he, but one constant was always Frank Sinatra because he'd release a song almost every single year when my dad was a kid. Um, my dad was born when he probably did some of his best work or he redid, redid some of his best work. And, uh, I became a Frank Sinatra fan, uh, right then and there. Um, I started listening to all the music, um, and I ended up, um, getting one of my own compilation, compilations, not compilations, but compilations of, um, Actually, I got my first compilation in 2008. I ended up getting, um, and this was when YouTube was, was in full blast, so you could listen to a lot of his music, because um, people would upload it pretty much daily, so you could listen to um, Luck Be a Lady um, and everything. And eventually somebody got me, uh, my dad, I think it was 2008, for my birthday, I think I got a. Uh, uh, I think I got nothing but the best. It was the first ever CD album that I got for that I got for a birthday or a, or a uh, Christmas gift. And I would, and I remember getting. I remember a year later, um, Sinatra sings of love. It was. I actually have. It was actually part of a color coded um, disc set um, that uh, came out in those two years. Very good, very, yeah, I remember getting that, yeah, I remember getting that in 2008, I remember buying that at the store, and it, well, actually, I asked for it for, for, birth, for a birthday, and I remember playing those CDs like crazy, um, I have a lot of the songs on my iPad, I have them live, a bunch of songs, but I have, I have them in Vegas on CD, I have them, I have them at um, the Golden Nugget, Forgot Caesar's Pal. I forgot the Golden Nugget. Caesar's Pal's Golden Nugget. Um, I have them at the Golden Nugget back in, I think it's 19, mid 80s, mid to late 80s, uh, actually 86, actually 86. I have them in 86 at the Golden Nugget. And then I have a compilation of him from like 60s on, from like 50s, no, not 50s, 60s and 70s. And then I've got another disc set called World on a String. Uh, that's another one where he's all around the world. And there's some very good songs on that one, too. That's That ranges right from the 50s all the way up into the 90s-ish. Um, and then there's a bunch of featurettes on it. And there's even him playing in Japan with Bill Miller, his uh, pianist, um, and such. Um so yeah, I started, so yeah, I got into Sinatra probably early to late 2000s, didn't get my first compilation, and I started buying ones at, um, when they came out. Um, my recent one was obviously called, was called World on a String, um, you know, but yeah, I, um, but yeah, the reason why I like his music, a lot of people can, a lot of people can leave it, can take it or leave it, um. But yeah, just the way he sings and the way he just does all the words. Sometimes he sometimes he changes the wording live, um, which some people don't like. Um, but he's a very very interesting. Uh, I got tons of books on him too. I've got his hundredth anniversary um, book, and um, I even got him when he's uh, going around the world and. Um, where one guy shadowed him, did photographs him in the mid to late sixties, um, and everything. So yeah, I just like it because his music's good, uh, especially the sixties music. It's hopping. Um, I've listened to some of the stuff from the thirties and forties. Um, it's sort of lullaby music. Um, it's stuff I would. Li it's stuff I usually listen to when I want to go to sleep. Um, it's sort of Glenn Miller. Um, level stuff um, and everything. It's just the slow. If you guys look up um, any of his songs from the 30s and 40s, they're very slow. They're not very rushed, and he doesn't sing fast. 
um, in the 60s, if you listen to him, 60s and 70s, he's, he's usually belting out his songs. He's very, very quick. He'll be, um, he'll just go very quick. And the other ones, it'll take forever. It'll, it'll take forever, but the music sounds so good. Um, and you see how his career progresses. He goes from this very, uh, he goes from this up and coming singer who goes very, very slow and has got a good voice control. Actually, he learned voice control from uh, Tommy Dorsey, uh, one of his band leaders um, that he was running with. And um, he learned uh, breathing control there. Um, I think that's the same way. Uh, and he found his sound in his, uh, in his uh, way of singing from there. Uh, much like uh, Glenn, Miller, Glenn, uh, Glenn Miller found his sound when he was doing uh, Moonlight Serenade back in the uh, back in the four, back in the thirties and forties. Um, but yeah, that's the reason why I like him. And the, he, he's got a nice, smooth voice. He's the suave, talented American. Um, he was always the you know said the fighting words. You know he didn't he, he didn't talk a hundred percent. Uh, educated in English, but when he did, he was, when he was singing, he did very, very good. And very few people, very few solo artists, uh, could touch him. I mean, he was in the realm with Elvis and everybody else. And Elvis was a very well-known singer back in the, uh, slash entertainer back in the fifties and sixties, one of his contemporaries and, uh, you know, Tony Bennett, uh, Dean Martin, of course, Sammy Davis Jr., who was also in those three, Sammy Davis Jr. and Dean Martin, along with the Rat Pack, those guys were always hilarious. Um, but yeah, that's that's music I listen to, and uh, that's the music that keeps me motivated. And it's nice jumping music, and it's good, jivey, 1960s on ish. So yeah, that's one of my musical preferences. I uh, I do like rock music, but I want something to dance to. <laughs> yeah, Frank's the Frank Sinatra or Blue Eyes is the man, the voice, the chairman of the board, uh, and everything. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's it. All right, guys. That is my talk for tonight. I thought I'd just tell you why I'm into a Blue Eyes and the reason why I liked having a radio style mic in front of me. It's not because I'm a I'm a radio show. It's just that this mic almost looks like almost looks like the one that uh, Frank would would record with or some style. I know he would have the lollipop a little. The thing would be a little higher here, but this is almost exactly what he recorded back in the back in the sixties. Except that thing was gigantic huge. It was probably as big as the microphone. It's probably as big as the switch, pretty much. And it's not this small, actually, no, it's not that. It's probably as big as, uh, uh, probably as big as a, uh, probably as big as an old toolbox. Because they were huge. It's not as lift and compact as, as this uh, sound beat, or zeal, zeal sound. Not sound beat, but zeal sound microphone. It's always good. And, um. Yeah, so that's the reason why I like transmitting with a microphone now because I always feel like I'm some of the greatest singers even though I don't sing on this thing and don't ever expect me to sing um, because I'm off key and I did and I need some voice training to do that. So, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Um, I may do other stories like this to keep you guys going during these tough times because uh, Frank Sinatra is a very big American icon and... Uh, if he were still alive today, um, he, he definitely would be given for this cause and making sure, uh, um, well, a younger version of him, he'd definitely be given to this cause and keeping everybody alive. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, everybody, good night. And uh, however, everybody stay safe and we'll get through this. Mike Mo, signing out for the night. This ain't the broadcast for the day, and that's the way it is. All right, folks.